This week on The Real Housewives of New Jersey. So immature. How the f have you brought yourself up? By bringing other people down, you're a f bully, Teresa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. she's not a bully, yeah. Yeah. You picked yeah. on Jackie's f***ing marriage. Yeah. Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about the new episode of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, Season 14, Episode 5. Let's get started, you guys. This was a crazy episode. Every single scene, they were bringing it. So, let's talk about it. All right, so I'm not gonna lie, I was a little, it was a little weird for me to watch this episode knowing that the show is probably getting canceled, but let's talk about the episode. So we start by seeing little clips of everyone in their homes and with their families. The first actual scene is Dolores at a steakhouse and she's with her family, her son, daughter, and Frank. It's nice to see them together. Their kids are very hardworking. They discuss the living situations that they are in. So Dolores lives with Polly at his townhouse. The kids live at Dolores' actual house, but they are probably going to have to move out soon just because, you know, jobs and stuff like that. So the question is, will Polly and Dolores look for a house to live together? The answer is not right now because, first of all, she says it's really hard to find house houses at the moment and he's not divorced so it makes sense why Dolores wouldn't want to go too far until he's totally legally divorced which is so pretty weird by the way to me like why is it like 10 years and you're still not divorced I have questions Frank talks a little about his plans to get engaged with his girlfriend Brittany and he actually pulls out the ring and that, that he bought he, he already bought the ring which is he's going to propose to Brittany with and then he illustrates how he will ask her and he gets on one knee and pretends to ask Dolores and it was hilarious that the whole restaurant thought he was actually proposing to Dolores and they were all happy they were like no 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 he's just practicing but lovely scene great family dynamic the next scene was very fun. Melissa, Rachel, and Danielle all took their sons to this really cool arcade place. They all got into like the bumper cards and were racing. And then the boys go play some more by themselves and the ladies sit down to eat and just chit chat. Danielle tells them about Fashion Week, week which she's still very excited about. She is also going to have a bougie brunch because she can't invite everyone to Fashion Week. So she's going to have a brunch where she can kind of celebrate that she's doing this. Um, She's calling it again the bougie brunch and she's inviting everyone melissa says we'll see how that goes because half of us don't even talk to each other she says she's actually going to have lunch with jennifer aiden later that week just to talk about their situation danielle asks melissa if she interacted with Teresa at all at the baseball game melissa says no definitely not but i did look at my son and told him to say hi to his aunt because you know she's he still needs to respect her which I definitely applauded Melissa for that last week. Danielle says that she wishes that was the same with her nephews. And then she talks about her sad situation. You know, she's not speaking to her brother, her dad, and now not even a lot with her mom. So Melissa reminds her that, you know, she wishes her dad was here. And Rachel too, they both are encouraging her to reach out and try to make things better because people are only here for so long. We then see Jennifer and Melissa and Teresa go over to Bill's place to get a facial treatment. Jennifer says that she thought the charity event was great. Jennifer is, though, very curious as to what happened with Jackie and Margaret. Like, what were they fighting about? Teresa says, well, maybe we should call her. And they do just that. Jackie answers and she says that she really wants to vent, but she doesn't really think it would be a good idea to talk about Margaret. But then she continues to literally do it and she says that she's um she didn't like that margaret doesn't stick up for her and that she no longer wants to make people happy just for them she's not willing to do what she wants to do and of course Teresa and jennifer are eating this up and gassing her up when they got off the phone actually Teresa even says let me follow her back on instagram and she did then we see Margaret with Joe and March Sr. Love March Sr. March Sr. has been having some health complications. She had surgery recently, so she's recovering at Marge's house. She also took some oxy and threw up, so they're talking about that. Then March Sr. asks him about the baseball game, and Margaret's like, oh my gosh, it was horrible. Jackie's fighting me. She, well, first she was fighting nonsense with Danielle, and then I take up for Danielle. Then Jackie comes at me. Margaret thinks that it was a ridiculous fight, but she's mainly offended by Jackie not reaching out 
after Jan's one year death anniversary. Jackie, she, remember, she said to Margaret, well, maybe you should have posted about it. But Marge says, no, I'm not going to post his grave. And I'm, I'm actually on his grave crying. So then in the next scene, Teresa goes over to Danielle's house. She brought her a bottle of tequila and Danielle opened that up real quick. Danielle then shows her some of the clothes, some of the pieces that she will be having at this fashion week. Remember, she has a line for like little girls. Teresa liked them and she said one of the pieces was really nice because it was basic, which Danielle was like, no, not basic. But Teresa says that she knows fashion and that basic is a good thing. Teresa asks her about who's going to go to the fashion week. But here's the thing. Like I said, Danielle only has a certain amount of people she can bring. She has 10 tickets. Um, and of course, she's going to have, you know, her close friends i guess not family because she's not talking to them but one of the people is going to be melissa but she doesn't feel like she should tell Teresa that at this point but she does make a good point that uh, melissa has been helping danielle with her brand since the very beginning and that's totally true we did see melissa have her have some of her clothes in her boutique Danielle also tells Teresa that she has now heard from margaret who was told by jen fessler that at the dog party that jennifer aiden had Jennifer was talking about Danielle, about this whole Lena hairdresser thing. So Danielle is starting to realize that something is going on with her and, and Jennifer. First, she sets her up last year. Now this, she's confused and Teresa says she should just talk to her about it at the brunch. Okay, so then the next scene we see Jennifer, Aiden, and Melissa finally meet up. I will say Melissa came in a little, I don't know, I don't know if aggressive is the right word, but she came in not too hot but let's put it like that she tells jennifer you know we've had this lunch before they've tried to fix things but jennifer keeps poking at her like why did she have to go tell danielle about the kissing rumor aiden says that danielle pressured her to tell her that there was no way for her to tell her that melissa already knew the whole explanation sounded like a lot of bs because jennifer says melissa's business is her own and that's that's her family but like at the end of the day she still told danielle about it eventually jennifer says that she wanted to actually get back at margaret that was her intention melissa says okay but like don't do it at the expense of my family melissa says and you have such a hard on for my husband and then jennifer goes off oh no he has a limp d blah 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 she also says that they've been trying to make up with her husband and not hers like what's up with that and melissa's like no 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 no, no. we've been avoiding you at events because of who you've been around with but it kind of dings on Melissa that it might be a little insecure that Jennifer has um, that she might feel like because she tells her, don't worry, we're not going to like your husband more than you. Like, so that might be an insecurity. So she definitely understands that. But you know what? Jennifer does apologize for repeating the rumor. She says that she does not want to fight with Melissa any longer. Melissa says it's OK. And if she doesn't want to talk to Joe or be friends with him, that's perfectly fine. Just don't talk about him negatively. And they both agreed and they even had some laughs. So Jennifer Aiden and Melissa are good for now. Then we see Melissa, Jen Fessler go to Margaret's house and March was opening up to them. She, they were eating some lunch that March prepared for them and March, Margaret's opening up about being an emotional wreck lately. She says that she's starting to realize that Jan was sort of like the glue of her life for a lot of things and she can't help but to wonder if Jan helped her in her marriage with Joe. So it's definitely going, it's definitely a hard time and it's going to be hard adjusting to life without Jan. So she certainly doesn't need the whole Jackie trauma. Melissa then tells them about the lunch with Jennifer and where they left off and then she did a funny impersonation of her. All right, so then moving on, it is finally time for Danielle's brunch. And even though it's called bougie, it actually was kind of bougie. All the women dressed up very nice. There was a lot of jewelry there by some company. Um, I also want to say they keep bringing this woman named Tiffany to all of the events. And everybody is there except Jen Fessler and Margaret. Danielle thanks them for coming. She wants them to be bougie and have fun. Dolores says, well, speaking of jewelry, and then she tells them about the whole funny thing that Frank did at the restaurant and everybody laughed. Someone asked her, would you marry Polly? And she says, well, he needs to get divorced first. And they asked, okay, let's suppose that he did. Like, would you marry him if he asked you? And she says, yeah, she would. Then somehow, you know, as the, in the middle of the conversation, they bring up Jennifer Aiden's dog party. And Danielle says, well, Jennifer, I heard that you had someone who spoke bad about me. And like, you all allowed her to speak negatively about me. And Dolores says, oh, yeah, Lena, you know, she was mad at you that she wasn't allowed at the VIP at your events. And Danielle says, she shouldn't have been at the VIP. Who is she? 
she's kind of right about that. I mean, I don't do all hairdressers get VIP. Danielle then brings up that she also heard that Jennifer was making fun of her at this party. And Jennifer says, no, no, I was not making fun of you. I was just, you know, demonstrating how you were talking. Teresa says that, you know, she wouldn't defend Danielle in that moment because she didn't know the situation. But Danielle looked very upset. Jennifer Aiden says, well, you know, speaking of things at the baseball game, you seemed a little weird like you made some comments and like Danielle's energy was just off and so Danielle says yeah you know to be honest I do feel weird and I want to ask you both did you set me up Jennifer is like no and Teresa gets very mad she says are you kidding like what are you talking about she got very angry and she says that Danielle probably has Melissa and Margaret talking in her ear but I don't think so I mean I think that anyone would wonder was I set up because think about it somebody tells you a rumor you think it's a secret little do you know that the person who told you the secret knows that the person already knows the secret. It's like a whole freaking complicated thing. But at the end of the day, she was set up. Then Jennifer is being messy and asks Jackie about her fight with Margaret. Clearly trying to get her to say something. Melissa was quick and said, don't do it, Jackie. You're way smarter than this. And then Jackie says, I'm not on anyone's side anymore. I'm going to do what I want to do. Okay. Go ahead, Jackie. Then Danielle asks Rachel if she and Teresa have talked yet. Teresa says, I know I always have to be the center of attention. I get it. Then she says to Rachel, I didn't say that your husband was a drug dealer now. I said he was one before. Rachel then brings up the intentions of Teresa bringing that up. The intention matters regardless of the verb now or then. Teresa says, well, his ex is the one that brought it up. Rachel says, if we want to go based on what exes are saying, you might want to be careful because the ex that has been talking the most lately has been Louis' ex. Teresa says, don't go there. Don't poke the bear. And Rachel is mad and asks her, what was the intention? What was it? Teresa says, I asked it. Um, I don't know if it was true. And isn't he a parking attendant? Maybe he should be a drug dealer to get more money. Wow. That really infuriated Rachel even more. She says, my husband has built a life for his family. What the F have you done, you stupid B? You went to prison as an adult. Oh my gosh. Teresa says that she's done and she is stupid. She's, she said, um, Rachel is young and stupid. I'm not doing this with her. Rachel says, well, you're old and stupid and you're a husband. She then says that Teresa has brought herself up by putting others down. And she says, you're an effing bully, Teresa. For example, you picked at Jackie's marriage. Then you guys, Jackie, I guess, got amnesia because now she wants to pretend like her and Teresa never had a problem. And like in that moment, Melissa had to interject. She was like, Jackie, now that is ridiculous. I'm not going to let you get away with you saying that nothing happened between y'all. That was literally like the main thing. And even Danielle said that Jackie and Teresa being friends all of a sudden is comical to her. Teresa eventually gets up. She gets her gift and leaves. Then Dolores tells Rachel that what just happened now is going to fester and she is going to get the wrath of Teresa. She says to Rachel, she is going to come for you. Sleep with one eye open. Damn. But Rachel did say she's not Jesus, so I don't care. Ooh, you guys, I'm telling you, it was a great episode. And I couldn't help but to think, um, we talked about this yesterday, the reunion was canceled, everyone is talking about it. But I honestly feel like there's so much good things that hap- that so far have happened this season. I feel like, listen, if anyone's listening out there at Bravo, please give us at least a one-part reunion at, at last, because I think there's a lot of drama that needs to be talked about. Now, I will say, I am very proud of Rachel for sticking up for her husband. Okay, now that I have given you guys the recap, now I'm going to tell you my opinion. And y'all can agree with it, y'all can disagree with it. It don't really matter, but it's my opinion. Teresa needs to get off this show now. And I think it's unreasonable that her fans get so angry when someone goes up against Teresa. But do they not understand what the Real Housewives is? Nobody, and I mean nobody, is safe from getting someone coming at them. And I think it's really rightfully so. And I think that Rachel made an excellent point. Why is it that one ex who's speaking recklessly can... Why is their stuff okay to bring up? But what about Louis' ex? What about all the abuse that she is claiming by Louis? Why is that not allowed? And I think that when Dolores was talking about, oh, just wait, you're going to get the wrath of Teresa. That's... 
Teresa is a very vindictive person. She's a conniving person. And no, and Rachel is correct. You are not God. You are not Jesus. Thank God you're not. It's ridiculous. And don't even give me started on Jackie. Jackie, in the words of Margaret, what a disgrace. What a disgrace that somebody with a JD could be so damn dumb. We literally saw Jackie and Teresa go at it for years. For like at least two years. Jackie talking about, did you get your confidence at jail? This and that. You came from my husband. Now you want to pretend like nothing ever happened. Listen, if you want to move on, that's wonderfully okay. But don't pretend like it never happened and then make people look dumb. It's completely BS. But you guys, please let me know what is your opinion about the episode. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch y'all next time. Y'all have a great one. Bye